<laughs> do it right? for the vibe. We're doing it for the vibe today. <laughs> so some people are very excited about that. Um, so we're going to go to the first we're going to go to the Fred. Um, you know, we are here before a safe summer. We're going to be straightforward, applicable, fresh, and engaging. Uh, I can just pinpoint everybody that has something to say. We can, we can share with each other. Have a good time. I'm very excited about the work, so I really don't mind the fact that uh, the whole intro thing that we kind of skip past that. I'm really excited to get into this word uh, before we, we get ahead of ourselves and go to God with a word of prayer. Uh, God, we just come right now thanking you for your presence, and we come asking that it's just all of you, uh, none of me, uh, and that we can just be vessels fit for your use. So I want to be more like you and just to grow and to uh, be an example for others uh, so that you can be glorified. It's in Jesus' name we can pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, see, Kayla already knows what it, what, what it means. Um, she's, uh, she's heard of going for the vine. Uh, of course, we see here a vine. This is a great vine. Uh, and we're going to see the, the relevance of that uh, when it comes to Scripture. All right, so we're going to set it off. All right, we're going to do like a Jeopardy thing, all right? So today, our answer is this right here. It's our definition. Uh, the action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force or to the will or authority of another person. What's our question? What is this? What is the action or fact of accepting or yielding to a superior force? Yeah, that, that's a good try with being humble, okay? Like if I put Cameron in a, a certain hole, right? Perspective 2.0. I'm about to show you a video that's gone viral. And by viral, it means that 
And, and this particular video has about two and a half million YouTube views. It's on YouTube alone. Mm -hmm. uh, this little girl, I don't know how old she is, but she's going to be asked to do it for the line. Some of you might have seen this. And this is her response. And I'm just like, wow, she get two and a half million views for this Come second. On. second. I can't get 50 views for the word I got. Come on. <laughs> so, you know, I was on a school bus on a field trip and a young lady said, Mr. Bones, do it for the vibe. I'm like, what? <laughs> and she, he had to say, like, real quick, right? Like, do it for the vibe. Like, don't do it. And she's like, come on, Mr. Bones, you know how to do it for the vibe? Like, I do not know what you're talking about. <laughs> but, you know, that's how things in a secular world works. You know, you tell someone how to do it for the vibe, I wouldn't Google it. Mm. But you gonna tell about some scripture. Come on. Okay, brother. They're gonna do like, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're gonna leave it right there. The world, we the world has this power to draw, like, oh, it's the world. Let me see what they talk about. I don't wanna be lame, right? right. Well because it's something godly or scripture or Bible, invite a friend in church, or you can come check this out. I hear the devotional. People don't share the devotional, you still in the email. Mm -hmm. They don't share the scriptures on Facebook, but you saw a picture or some kind of video of a celebrity doing things with a shower rod. All of a sudden, yeah, I'm going to share this, I'm going to share it, I'm going to share it. You can't share the good news. Come on, baby. Anyway, we'll put it in perspective too far. Uh, this is what doing for the vine is all about right here. <laughs> yeah, say what? <laughs> all right. And this has two and a half million views mm -hmm. on YouTube alone. So do it for the vine. What is the vine? Okay, we're gonna get to that. What is the vine? All right. The vine. Jesus said, I'm the true vine. So let's make sure we don't get the vine mixed up with the true vine. Okay. Like a lot of us Christians, a lot of real people in general, we get the true vine mixed up with the vine. We like to substitute reality or the good stuff with the fake stuff. Come on. All right. And I even think about our communion a lot of times. That is not like wine in there. It's like some grape juice with a little something. I don't know what they got in there. Yeah, all right. But that's not the true wine, yeah. right? So what the vine is right here, this is like Larry Bird. This is a little bit tweet bird. The vine is a feature uh, application on Twitter where you can share seven-second videos of something that's supposed to be so amazing. Wow. And apparently it loops from, from our research. Like if Carter were dancing real quick, oh, that's so cute. Everybody loves to see Carter dancing for seven seconds. I could share it on the vine and then see how many views I could get for that because I'm popular. I have all these views on the vine. Mm. So this is what happened right here. This young lady right here, her friends, so I guess she was like a little ballerina, and they're like, do it for the vine. You know, do it, do this dance move so that I can share your video footage on the vine on my Twitter account and have like two and a half million views. I have my friend, oh, you thought it's so cute. Oh, your cousin so can't dance. Mm. You know. So that's what the vine is, but in the actual, we need to make sure we are focused on the true, true vine. vine. Yes. All right. Because Jesus is the true vine, and the thing about us in life is we get our priorities <laughs> out of way. We like to have a good social media status, Come on. and we don't really care about our status with God. Mm. You know, if I get so many likes, then people really like me. If this video gets so many likes, then people really like me. But am I trying to impress Jesus? Am I trying to impress God? You know, we always try to prove a point to people. I'm so big, I'm so bad. I always try to prove a point to my wife. I can be in basketball. I prove a point to our children. But I'm the man. I'm daddy. You must do what I say. You know, every day we try to prove a point. We look good. We can lift someone's weight. When I go to the gym, I'm trying to max out every week. Um, I'm like, yay, I'm doing this. I'm proving a point to myself or the people. But what are we proving to God with our character? Yes. What are we really proving to God by <clears throat> the things we do, the things we say, the things we think? Or better yet, what are we proving to God by the things we don't do? You know, like if it's one, it's raining, God, how many people be in church today? Mm -hmm. God, you send the rain, and they're going to send it to me. It never fails. I can think about my very first sermon, uh, August 24, 2008. It rained, and I'm looking at like all these empty pews and pine girls. I thought these people liked me. I thought they would come and get, and come in here. And I was like, this brother's going for a sermon. I thought they would come in here. Word of God, what, what can you do? How can God use him? But when the rain comes, people say, I ain't going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it for the vine. Oh. You know, that's what we do a lot of times. 
But we have to prioritize our status. Like, is it more important to have all these people like me, these social media views? Or is it more important for uh, people to say they like me? Or is it more important for God to really be pleased with my living? Come on. Come on, bro. What's more important? You know, what, what am I putting my time or energy to? So we have to ask ourselves as Christians, are we going to do it for the mind? Because here's what it says. Everything that we go through is for our good. Uh, because he... And he being God, it's our it's to see it, right? Mm -hmm. He's going to cut off every branch of his that does not produce fruit. Okay, now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is very personal to our ministry right here. As I look around, I, I, maybe two or three months ago, I could see certain people. Mm -hmm. I don't see them anymore. Yes. Thank you. Maybe a year ago, certain people be like, uh, you know, Invited to fish fry and all in the house and all the other kind of stuff. We're going to have people in our lives that they might be here for a season. Yes, say that. But they really aren't there in lifetime. They aren't really there for you because this is essentially what God does. He cuts off people and things uh -huh. that, aren't, that aren't part of the vine. Yes. And then sometimes we get stuff out of our own vine that's not a part of our vine. Yes. And hip hop, where they say we got to get the squares out of our circle. I heard that on the radio before. You gotta get this. Uh, things that are not really for you, you gotta get rid of them. But God, He, he does it. A lot of things was it's not for us to do. We just have to set the stage. Yes. And Daniel, he said here before. We set the stage and God will do the rest. When we share the gospel, we can't save souls. The Holy Spirit does that. So God does, He's like a pro, He's a landscaper. I mean, you know, I don't think the people cut the grass. Uh, they have to come around and prune things. I gave them my own house. I have to prune the bushes before they just cover our windows. Mm. I to, it's really good, right? So he cuts out every branch that does not produce fruit. Oh, that's good. Mm. The fruit of his spirit. We mm. know it's in Galatians 5. We know peace, love, maturity, compassion, you know, these kind of things. If we don't produce that, we need to be careful. And here's what he does too that you know, he also trims every branch. So for those of us who are part of the vine, he still trims us. That's right. Okay, now. He trails every branch that produces fruit, and here's the reason why. To prepare it to produce even more yes. fruit. Mm. So, it's a simple thing we call addition by subtraction. And in order for us to grow, you know, something has to go. It has to go. Oh. We want to grow. Uh, if I want to add this nice rose bush, I got to get rid of some of these weeds. Oh, I know. I got to get rid of some of these thorns. I got to have some nice tomatoes. Well, that's kind of trying to grow in peas. I got to get rid of some stuff. Yes. Before it's going to grow. Then my mom, she's like, cut the brown leaves off her plants. And she's going to have a green thumb. And we got to get rid of this kind of stuff. And in our lives, what do we have to get rid of? Because God, he don't, he don't, he's inspecting us. He's inspecting our lives. And let me pull this out because that's causing a problem for my son. Let me pull that out. That's causing a problem for my daughter. Let me cut that off because it's been like a cancer to him or to her. So it has to go if we want to grow. Mm. It might not feel good. It might be like, I really liked her. Mm. Mm, I really like that habit. I really, I really enjoy spending time doing that. But you know, if you really want to be serious about your walk. Like, and here's what I'm learning in life. God's going to do it. Thank you, Mom. He's going to get rid of it. Uh, sometimes I think about, you know, you, certain things block you, you know, from doing things you might want to do, but God will ultimately be like the biggest blocker ever. <laughs> if, it, if it's about his vine, his branches, he will cut it off. <clears throat> you might be like, what are you doing, God? I was just, just, just trust me, he had it. So to make it personal, who or what in your life? And I think, you know, we prepare, like, what, what in my life, you know, what I need to get rid of, who or what in my life needs to go so that I can grow? It, it might seem painful at the time, it might seem painful to say, like, you know what, and you just, ultimately, you aren't any good for me. Mm. Uh, I think about this Trip Lee song, you know, he talked about his iPhone, the song called I Love, and he said, I had to separate from my iPhone. Yes. Because I'd rather spend time on you and spend time with my family. Come on. When it comes down to the Xbox, when it comes down to, to, to I don't know, whatever the habit is, to the shopping, to 
whatever it is, I don't know you, you know you, the Spirit knows you. So you sit there and you have a personal conviction of righteousness. What is it that you must do? Get rid of and probably you, you saw on top of your head right now. Yeah. Take your tongue. Yeah. Well, what is it about now? I, mean, I really got to sacrifice this thing. Yeah. Because if I want to continue to grow and produce fruit for God, yes. I have to let it go. Yeah. I have to let it go. Yeah. Because we have everything we need. I love what Jesus said here. You've already been prepared to produce more fruit by the teaching I have given you. So what tools do we already have to help us be successful as Christians? What do we have? The Word of God. The Word of God. Yes. We have a complete scripture. Uh, and, and, you know, the Bible is the most published, publicized book in history. Not only do we have the Word of God, what else do we have? Each other. No, each other. Yeah. Right. We can text, we can call, we can email, we can Skype, we can FaceTime, we can go back to the house. Yes. Go by the lake and fish, talk about it. Hey, I have some problem. Let's talk about it. Hey, I need some help. Hey, I, I just need some comfort. I need, I mean, whatever you need, you have it. I mean, I think about it, you go to YouTube, Bible.com, Bible Gateway, there's commentaries online, everything you need to know about God, you can just really find out it's successful. Any particular problem, how you overcome addiction, how you overcome depression, how you overcome any situation in life, you have the tools available in 2014. But Jesus said this in like AD 30 and 30. You know? <laughs> because there were already scriptures already there uh, when, when Jesus walked around. Jesus walked around quoting Old Testament scriptures. Bless you. So we have what it takes to do for the Bible, but do we? Here's the key right here. We have to apply the effort. You know, and he said, we must stay joined to me. Stay joined to Christ. And I'll stay joined to you. No grace from this fruit alone. They must stay connected to the vine. Who's the vine? Jesus. Jesus. You gotta stay connected, all right? Not Twitter, not whatever that other thing is you think you cannot live without. That thing you can't live without is nothing more than a leech. That's it. It's a parasite. You're surviving, it's surviving for you. If you don't give the time of day, it won't, it won't make it. You cannot produce fruit alone. You must stay joined to me. All right, we cannot neglect God. It's like a couple. As you see these two people dancing, you can't dance as a pair if you don't come together. Right. I can't dance with my wife. She's way over there. She's about 20 steps away. Yes. So I'm going to get together and dance. And then I'm, well, I know Foster, you had a really cool dance. You did that time you can, you can do. Right, that's really cool. I like that. Not the jig, but you can dance by yourself. I like it. Yeah, yeah. But when we dance by ourselves, it's just dancing by ourselves. I mean, it's good and uh, fun. You know, we have a good time. I thought it was so hilarious. No. But in a spiritual sense, when we dance by ourselves, what, what can happen to it? So it says we have to stay connected to the vine. Yes. Amen. You know, sometimes I, I, you know, we can get convicted like God, you know, I was praying, I, I say thank you when I got up and I didn't even say anything else the rest of the day. Mm. Wow. Really? I mean, I, I, I'm going to pray when I come to bed, but I fall asleep because I'm just so tired. Mm. Help us. Help can you say you stay connected to the vine? Yes. I mean, you still a part of the vine because God kept you, right? I mean, you made the work all day and he loves you. He's a gardener. Now, God will have the garden of the year, of the month. He's going to win that award. Because he's going to take care of his people. He's going to be sure to prune. He's going to be sure to prick your attention. Uh, hold on now. You are mine. I need to, I'm going to take somebody else's schedule, take something away because you mm. must stay connected to me. I am a jealous guy. I'm the gardener. I'm the one that plants you. I'm the one that tears the soil for you. I'm the one that sets you down. I'm the one that plants the seed. I'm the one that waters you. I'm the one that provides sunlight for you. Yes. You're going to show me some attention. Teach me. Yes. Either you're going to do it my way or, uh, <laughs> or the highway. Because it's a matter of submission. I really don't want to get to the point in my life where I'm just like, okay, God, okay, okay. And then God just had me in the stranglehold. I was like, I just have to just, mm. I have don't to just wave the white flag. The white flag. Don't, don't see the red ass, but the white flag. And it, I, we shouldn't have to get to that point as Christians because we already have tools. Mm. And Jesus said, I'm the vine. Mm. I'm the true vine. Just do it for me. Whatever we need to do, we need to do it for God. 
But here, here's the thing, and the conclusion of that. We just don't do a lot of time. They thought they'd do it for the vibe. At first, it's like, I'm just, I ain't going to do it. As Christians, aware of Jesus Christ, aware of his sacrifice, aware of all he's done, and aware of the fact that uh, he woke us up, fed us, put clothes on our body, roof over our head, we just say, uh-uh, God, I ain't going to do it. Wow. The scripture says a whole lot. There's a lot of do's and a lot of don'ts in the Bible. And a lot of things we can kind of figure out ourselves, you know, it's the gray area. But we just say, God, I'm not going to do it. Oh, help me, Jesus. Help us all. Yes. The scripture says, love your neighbor. Mm, I ain't doing that. Come on. Come on, brother. Bring it. Make that phone call to that person you know is hurting. Come on. Mm -mm. I ain't going to do that. Pick up the phone. Call your brother. Mm -mm -mm. Your sister. Huh? Mm -mm. I ain't going to do it. Don't, don't do that, you know, because your word says don't do that. Uh-uh, I ain't going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what I want to do. Oh, you know, forgive, forgive that person. You know, it's been a long time since y'all talked or whatever. I'm sorry, God. I ain't going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, go tell somebody about Jesus. Go tell somebody about me. Come on. I say you, and then go share the gospel with somebody, your next door neighbor. All your co-workers, who you know is going to throw a whole lot of the husband, he's a deadbeat, whatever. Mm -mm. Preaching, I ain't going to do it. And Jesus is kind of like, like, God, I'm the God. <laughs> you ever seen a little shop of Well, the, the guy, Seymour, he, he grows this plant and it starts eating blood and it grows bigger and bigger. And eventually the plant wants to eat the owner. Yes. He wants to eat Seymour. He's like, feed me, Seymour. <laughs> mm -hmm. Little shop of horror. And that's what we come to our lives when we tell the guy, I'm not going to do it for wow. the line. Wow. I'm going to continue to take on my Christian cause, whatever I feel like it. Because I don't feel like you're worthy to do it for a guy. Mm. This little girl don't feel like these people were worthy to see her do her little things. Mm. We don't feel like God is worthy for us to be devoted to him 24-7-365. Now, we wear a t-shirt. Come on. I mean, he's there for us 24-7-365. But there are times we say, I ain't going to do it. And as Christians, you know, we really have to say, God, I need whatever it is that you need to take away from me. Yes. Whatever my attitude, my self-pride, my, um, well, my perfect self. Hmm. You know, well, I can, can just look around and, and I don't see any faults hmm. in myself. I ain't going to do that because I love me. <laughs> but I can do I can see, I can see everybody else's problem. But not, not me. No. Okay. But, but, but seriously, God, what is it that you can take away so that I can say, God, yes, I will? Because okay. like Obama said, yes, we can. We can because we have the spirit and the mind of Christ. We can do all things. But we just decide not to. Okay. I'm not going to give my life to the Lord. I'm not going to just be a, pair, uh, a hypocrite. I'm not. Because I just want to do me. But that has to change. You know, but, but here's, the, here's the good news. This is great to close. The conclusion of matter 2.0. If we just come near to God. Yes. He'll come, come near to us. You know, if I just, just start walking toward my wife and then my arms out, being real nice, I'm like, hey, baby, can I get up? This is this dance. <laughs> you know, if we draw near to each other in our relationships, if we draw near to God with our love and our devotion, we spend more time with Him. Yes. He's right there. He's ready to come back. God's like, hey, come on, I've been waiting all this time. It wasn't, it wasn't me, it was you. But it doesn't matter because I love you. I'm going to forget all about all your past thoughts. Okay. I'm going to forget about everything you've done. Everything you've done, it's all, it doesn't even matter. We can yes. start at zero. I'm just so happy you're back home. Yes, thank you, Lord. Let's sit down and eat together. Let's sit down and come. Let me just hug on you. Let me love on you. Because God loves us so much. So I was thinking about preparing, I was thinking about all these great men in the Bible and great women. You know, David, he couldn't do it. He said, I ain't going to do it, God. I'm going to go have a loser. I'm going to go do something this other man's life. Moses said, I ain't going to do it, God. I'm going to just strike the rock. Hmm. 
Joshua, he said, I ain't gonna do it. Jacob, all these leaders, all the, uh, and what's the with Jonah, right? God said, go to this city and preach. He said, I'm really not gonna do it. Like, for real, for real, I'm gonna run away. Mm-hmm. He found himself in the belly of a fish. So we got along. We, we are the first people that just uh, guys, you know, say so with the God. Um, That's why God sent Jesus Christ. Thank you. Because He's the only person in history to say, you know what, God, I will do it. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. I will die for that sins because I am the true Ryan. Mm-hmm. So as we get ready to close, let us just think about the fact that He is the true Ryan, and we just need to just do it. For him. For whatever it is he needs us to do, we need to do it for him. And whatever it is we don't need to do, because it hurts the mind, then we don't need to do it. It's just that simple. So if you never seen that video before, if you never heard it for the mind before, think of it now. Right? When you think of that, just make that it come to mind when you have this this, this, this moment. Because we all have our moments each and every day. We can do the right thing or the wrong thing. Do I continue to have it or do I let it go? Do I make the right decision or the wrong decision? Do I uphold the standards of God or do I just uphold my own personal standards? So my request, I'm just asking simply, and even for myself, because we all in the same boat, is that we just do it for the line. Just that simple. Now, all of us, are we ready to go and be the light? Yes. Are we ready to be the light? Yes. Are we ready to do for the Yes. Yeah, all right. The true vine. We're going to do it. We're going to do it for the true vine. Glory to God. I just yes. got to take up and pray this morning.